Welcome to the uh, next interview on our channel. We have the Herbalizer Hill, so welcome to Wrocław. Hello. Hi, hi. We, we already mentioned before we started recording that, you know, it's kind of strange because we are on a festival that's mainly reggae dance hall. Most of the artists here are, are in that genre and you're here. Does it change anything f uh, for you when you play in a different environment? Not really. We play uh, jazz festivals, dub festivals, hip-hop things, electronic things. People, people, they don't know, they can't make up in their mind what, what we are. You know, uh, we were trip-hop, they called us trip-hop in the beginning, then electronica, and then uh, when uh, UK rap became popular, people used to call us UK hip-hop. Now, uh, I guess we don't do the hip-hop stages because today's hip-hop doesn't sound like jazzy and you know uh, samples and or at least the mainstream doesn't yeah that's true because underground there's lots of very good very cool records but in the mainstream it's completely different but the the modern audience is mostly informed these days by the mainstream so but you mentioned trip hop and I wanted to go a little back, uh, back to your beginning since if I'm counting correctly you are now on stage 23 years I'm yeah. making it 95 was the beginning right so you know in the it's funny that when the in the ninja tune era we can we, we can say that everybody almost was named trip hop you were DJ shadow uh, yeah. was also trip hop and now when you when you look back at your records, you, they actually sound like old school hip hop comparing to yeah, what we have right now. When, when we started, I think that what drew Ollie and I together was our love of hip hop, and within that, it was the digging, the old funk, the soundtrack music, jazz, all sorts of influences that you could use to make hip hop. And we wanted to make our own version of hip hop, but initially we didn't know that many MCs, so we, we started to make music inspired by, like we, we both grew up in the 70s and on TV and in films the music, the background music was amazing, yes, was, was, was amazing and that was a big influence on us so we kind of developed a, an instrumental sound that was very inspired by hip hop but was also kind of involved, com, like almost composing by making all these different layers and adding different influences and make, yeah, making in, instrumental music and then as us and Ninja Tune and then they added other artists like Vadim and we, we got more international exposure. We got to meet MCs from all around the world and some of, some of it was com complete like serendipity like how we, how we ended up working with uh, What What who's now known as Jean Grey. That had nothing to do with the work we were doing with Ninja Tune. That was a, a mutual friend of ours who introduced us but come like 2000s people knew us so um, I, I called up uh, they, they reissued some of the KMD records on, on 12 inch and there was a phone number and I just randomly called up one night, I was really stoned in my studio and MF Grimm picked up the phone <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Jake from England, I'm, you know, we're, we're this hip hop band, the, the Herbalizer, love to do some work with Doom and he's like, yo, yo, sure man, so you're saying you, you want my, my boy to rap on one of your beats and you're gonna <laughs> give me like $500? I'm like, yeah, 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 pretty much. And, and, and all those things happened and Ollie had stayed, um, well actually uh, Rucka Ara Science from Dilated had stayed with Ollie when he shared a flat with DJ Food and okay. when when uh, Rucka first came to London, he he didn't know that many people but I think he, Ollie had met him DJing in America and it was just like a, you know, a hook up and then a couple of years later we're like, yeah, yeah, Rucka, you want to you wanna come and rhyme on one of our beats and slowly we started to work with when you look back on it now, it's quite an impressive list of MCs, but it was all just chance and random encounters. Okay, so you never, that's, that, on the other hand, that was something that always surprised me, that you work with many MCs, but I always thought that you might have actually worked with, you know, even more names, and, but, so you didn't, you still wanted to keep, oh. and you, uh, you wanted to keep your albums more instrumental, so it's still the Herbalizer well, part, style? Part of our sound has always been instrumental, um, I mean, when we when we made our first record, Wind Institute, we didn't know whether uh, we would how far it would go, and whether we would get the opportunity to work with people like Bahamadia and Rocker and MF Doom and Blade and, and so many different people. Uh, so we 
I mean, essentially, we worked out, uh, you know, an, an instrumental formula of our own rather than just making, like, what you would make for a vocal track and then not featuring a vocal because there's a lot of record, instrumental hip-hop records out there that, to me, when I hear them, they always sound like they need a, a rapper. But we... Uh, uh, idea was that we would mainly take our influence for the way we would arrange music from soundtracks because we love soundtrack music anyway particularly the like the really funky ones Lalo Schifrin and Roy Budd and Johnny Pate so we would take those kind of ideas and see if we could you know find something in the middle of hip-hop and soundtrack music but with a, a modern electronic edge and and all the labels you know like the trip hop and the electronic these were never something that we were thinking of and I think like a lot of people of that era most of the people of that time they didn't consider themselves to be trip hop <laughs> they were just doing the music that they but wanted there's to no, do there's no such yeah. thing as trip hop well yeah I mean usually uh, it's it's someone in the media someone in the in a music press that comes up with a name for because everybody's a scene. name for something, right? Yeah, because sometimes a scene is just a loose group of people who are kind of doing a s similar thing, but a trip hop just became one of those names that they gave to a wide range of stuff that they didn't that didn't fit easily in, into any of the other boxes. So, but uh, yeah, we've always just done us, which is yeah, it's, there's a lot of hip hop in there, there's a lot of jazz in there, there's a lot of funk, soul, and soundtrack music in there, and we just mash it together in our, in our own special way, really. Yeah. What, what you're saying about um, working with maybe bigger names, we, we never really wanted to have a featured MC completely overshadow our yeah. name. Okay. And uh, I mean, I think probably Bahamadir was, for us, that's when we really pushed the boat out and we paid her quite a lot more money than we paid anyone else. And she came over and did a show with us and we, mm paid for it to stay in a hotel and it was really good and we absolutely loved what she was doing but that was kind of as far as we wanted to go you know like rather than paying Redman twenty thousand dollars to to feature on your album we kind of wanted to work with people that are at a similar level although now looking well, back on it pe pe <laughs> people like um Roots Maneuver and Doom, they've, yeah. you know, they've gone yeah. on to yeah. much, much higher heights. I mean, even, even Blade, I mean, I think Blade is one of the yeah. underrated, ra most underrated rappers. Well, so. What we wanted to avoid was, like, because quite often you, you, at least if you're cynical as we are a bit, is when you see such and such a record featuring so and so, what you feel like quite often, especially these days when you see it, where you just feel like, well, that with that, and you think, well, actually, that's a music executive has decided to put these two things together that's so that true. they can sell this person's stuff to that person's audience, to that person's stuff to this yeah, person's that's audience. Most of the features right now. And that's, that's okay. what we never, ever wanted to do. We wanted our collaborations to be true creative meetings of, of creative minds, you know, that... that um, and everyone that we worked with was into what we were doing it was never a kind of yeah i'll come along and okay. you pay, pay me my money and then Forget i'll, I'll do my verse and then bye bye you know we we actually did where we were able to where we were actually in the same building because some some people that we worked with it was just we just spoke to them on the phone and then send them a dat a dat tape as it was in those days and they said something back but with Jean Grey, with Rocker, you know, we developed a, with Blade, we developed a uh, Roots Maneuver, we de developed a, a personal relationship, um, which ultimately will always make this record sound better. I was, yeah. I was reading that uh, story on Facebook last week about a guy that was in the studio when ODB came down and rapped on the Mariah Carey track, and it is fucking hilarious the story of how he came when he was drunk and he would. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> it's hard to imagine him not being drunk. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very funny. It's just as just as you would imagine it would would have been, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but speaking about the because you mentioned you know the the, the the executives on the stage working right now, how do you actually feel about hip hop nowadays when you listen to it, well, comparing the, to? There's there's actually on the underground level, 
on the independent level, like lit, and it's, it's mostly people who are not even necessarily signed to an imprint. They're just putting their own records out. Like they're going in the studio, they're recording their stuff, and then they are actually paying to manufacture their own records and then putting them out there. That stuff on that that's happening on that level and on small labels is better than it's been in years. But in the mainstream, oh. No, that, was, that was like how it was when, when Ninja Tune blew up. Everything that was good was underground and the major stuff, mainstream well, stuff. Well, I don't know. I mean, you no. did have Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, well, and people the, like the, that. The, major, were... the majority of it was kind of bad. And then it kind of, in the late 90s, 2000s, the independent thing, underground, kind of went to the side and there was some really good stuff on the mainstream as well. And, you know, it's, all, it's always changing. And speaking of independent, what was the, uh, behind the decision of, you know, coming from independent as Ninja Tune to independent your own label? Uh, well, we tried that <laughs> and it was too much hard work so now we're, we're putting out records with the label again. This time we're with break, barely breaking even which feels like a good home for us because it's, you know, it's a, it's, 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 you know, a kind of small, smaller operation but the quality of the music that they put out on that label is really high, so it feels like a comfortable place. In, in fact, you know, in, in all honesty, I would probably sit and spend more time listening to a record released on BBE than even during the, the, the you know, the golden Ninja Tune era. You know, there were some, some artists we felt we had a bit in common with, but there was plenty of stuff. Yeah, I think it just, like, just got too big for me, at, you know. at, at one moment, you know, because I was a big fan of, of Ninja Tune. From my perspective, at, at least from the records that were available in Poland, that some, it just blew up being so big that, you know, it was many, many artists that you didn't know who's actually on Ninja Tune, sub-labels of Ninja Tune that we had then, and everything was mixed. But uh, I wanted to ask, what took you so long between 2012 and 2018? Because it was six years before you actually personal, came. Personal, personal issues, health, and things like that. Okay, so so, so it wasn't like you you had enough of music and no. stories like that. No. Okay, and then the the 2008 was it hard to actually come back after so many years? How how did it feel? Uh, yeah, it is. Everything everything has changed. People don't buy so many records. Uh, I've had quite bad health issues. And that's kind of why we, 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 we took time out. But so when I'm thinking six years now with the technology right now, even that right changed from the way you make, made music. Yeah, but we're still using the same technology. But okay. I've only bought an MPCX, so that's new technology relatively. But yeah, but we haven't used it on a, on a, on a recording. All, yeah, all the Herbalizer records so far. Okay. But yeah, you've okay. done mostly using the same kind of uh, way we, we always did. Although at the beginning, we were using hardware because there was no VST so we were, we were using Akai a computer samples. for sequencing but but yeah we were using uh, Akai S3000 and Akai MPC3000 in the beginning a little bit of SP12 uh, EMU um, and then as the VST you know as you were able to record larger amounts of audio mm -hmm. and e the editing was was easier in a computer we just started to do more and more stuff in the computer and also you had lots of things like uh, multi-sample instruments and things like that that were never ever available before yeah. so uh, so it's, yeah it's, it's everything's kind of recorded in sequence in, in a computer the way it always was but uh, it's a mixture of real instruments and and um, Multi orchestral sounds. But I'm yeah. guessing more and more. We, we but the, the, well, this this latest album we did contains no uh, copyright infringement at all, which cannot it's be not cannot not be said for anything else in our repertoire. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else samples, of course. has uncleared samples from other people's records, whereas this yeah. one doesn't. <coughs> yeah, so that was our, the new album came out. Well, it's not so new now, but it came out in March 2018. Yeah. It was called Bring Out the Sound, and that contained no samples. It was all written and composed by us and the horn guys as well. So what's next in store? You know, will it take less than six years for the next for the next album to come out? Yeah, definitely. So you still have it in you? Yeah. Okay, so you know, you have a concert to play, so I won't hold you uh, any longer. So thank you very much for a nice interview and hope to see you soon again. Cool. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Good.